Welcome everybody to our fun Copic session we're going to be doing tonight. I'm so excited. I've been getting ready most of today to share lots of hopefully informative information for you guys. If you are catching the replay, I'm saying hi to all of you guys as well. Hello, hello. We'll just give it a minute or so. Uh, Chris is in the background. Um, we will give it a minute or so and get some people on here. So I have a lot to cover. You guys had awesome questions. Um, some things that I hadn't really thought about in a while, so that was kind of cool. And yeah, I can't wait to get started. Hi guys. Hi Sharon. Hey Amy. Amy's been working so hard on all of my class kits. I'm heading to Firefly Farm this weekend, and so Amy had to make 120 kits. It's just crazy, crazy. So I can't wait to go to Minnesota. Hello, Maureen, Sophie, Judy. Hey, Sharon. Brenda, awesome. Hello, Jeanette. Lots of people popping on. Hey, Michelle. Thank you guys so much. I can't even get over how awesome you guys all are, how excited you've been about uh, this, this live. It makes me excited. Hey, Janet. Hi, Lindsay. I'll see you this weekend. I can't wait. Kimberly, how are you doing down there? I know you, I think you evacuated your home, but I didn't watch any news today, so I have no idea what's going on. Hey, Sarah. Over on the West Coast now, we miss you. Nikki and Donna and Kathleen. All right, I am going to flip the screen. Um, so bear with me, but I wanted to just give a little hello before all you saw was my hands. So let's do that. And I'm also bringing it up on my iPad so that I can see your comments. At least I think I'm bringing it up on my iPad. There's always some sort of technical difficulties. I think it's because Facebook changes. Um where everything is all the time. So bear with me. Ah, there we go. All right. So bear with me. Making sure you guys can see as much of my table as possible. All right, hey Crystal, I'm glad you figured it out. Um, oh no, Janice, I'm sorry, I hope your mother-in-law is okay. You can definitely catch the replay later, that is more important. Thank you guys. All right, hi Frank, Denise, okay. So, I decided I wanted, well, I've been asking you guys in the Facebook group what you want me to do lives on, and a lot of you have been chiming in and you have wanted some Copic help. So I wanna just give you a little bit of background information. Um, I am Copic certified. I became Copic certified over a decade ago. Um, I used to teach for a, a different stamp company and we had a training session and we had a chance to be Copic certified. Um, I learned from Marianne Walker. She's super talented and, I, and um, still works with Copic. And when I learned, we learned with the Copic Originals. And I'll get into the differences because a lot of people have been asking how come I use the Square Copics. And over the years, I still love my Copics. I use them a lot in my classes, especially, because they're just easy. Anybody can pick up a marker 
and color inside the lines. And because of the high quality of the Copic markers, you get a really nice, smooth coloring. Um, and that is just amazing. And then you can go above and beyond and get amazing blends, blending techniques. So I just wanted to show you guys, because I know a lot of you know my true love is watercoloring and playing with distress inks and all of that. But what's nice about the Copics is that when you color images with Copics and put them against a watercolored background, it really helps the image pop off of that background. Um, hello, Ellen. Thank you for tuning in from Ireland. You can always sleep later. Um, glad you're okay, Kimberly. Um, hello, Michelle from Iowa. Awesome. So yeah, so you can see like for this card, for instance, both of the images, these are neat and tangled, um, are colored with Copics, but then my background is all done with ink smooshing, and then I um, did ink blending as well. But you can just see how, because the Copics are so nice and crisp, those images really pop off of the card. Then for this one here, same thing, I have an ink blended background with Distress Inks, but then the mermaid on the inside, I colored her with Copics and it really helps again to pop her off of the card. So I just kind of wanted to show how I tend to blend my two loves, right? I love to color with Copic markers, but I also love watercoloring. Um, these are some recent cards I did with the Simon Says card kit. So the mermaids are done with Copics, but then I did um, Distress Inks uh, techniques for the background. Thank you guys so much for the hearts. I'm so excited to see so many of you here. And something like this, I just did a simple two color blend on the whale and then the rest is all done with Distress Inks. So, um, and then a few people had asked um, for techniques on snowmen, so we are gonna talk about that later. No problem, Melissa, you can always catch the replay later and it'll be there forever. So, um, well, forever, I, you know, until Facebook goes away. Um, so no worries, um, you'll definitely be able to catch that later. So some people have been asking, what is a cheaper alternative? What can I get instead? Copics are really expensive. Um, and my answer to you about that is, I wouldn't go with a cheaper route personally. And I'm gonna show you guys um, a way that you can get less markers and have them you know, work for you in a um, larger capacity. But I really wouldn't go with a cheaper route. And the reason why is Copics are artist grade markers. They, um, they honestly weren't made for card makers, and um, they were made for Japanese Magna artists. And so they're made with such a high quality. I have had some of my Copics for over 10 years, and I talk about this in my classes, where I have Copics that I use just in my classes, um, and then I have a set that is just my own. And the Copics that I use in my classes have been used by thousands of people because they've been used over 10 years. And I teach a lot of classes and a lot of people use them and they're still going strong. I've just added more ink in them. I haven't had to change any of their tips. Some of them could probably use their tips change just because when people are new to Copics, they might be a little bit heavy handed. But in general, they work great. I know a lot of people that are watching right now have been in my classes before, and I think they'll attest to that. Um, so it's kind of an investment, right? You could buy the something cheaper and, you know, maybe use them for a little bit, but maybe down the road want more from your markers or not be happy with them, and then you're gonna have to turn around and invest in Copics. So I would definitely say to invest in Copics from the beginning. 
Um, but that doesn't mean you need to buy all 300 plus. You really, really don't need to. Um, we'll talk about, I'm going to share with you guys my list of Copics that I would start with, but I'm also going to share with you a little trick where you don't have to get a ton to get started and you can still do some blending. So people are still popping on. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Joyce from Illinois, Trisha from Georgia. Um, I, I really hope you guys um, get a lot of information out of this and I will hopefully not keep you too, too long. So, um, so Copics are an artist grade marker. They dry acid free. Um, they don't pill the cardstock. So when you use water based markers, like a Tombow brush marker, you can't really add layers of marker with those and you can't really blend those on the paper um, because they'll start to pill and eat away um, at the cardstock. And Copics won't do that. They're alcohol based. Um, and so that makes it really, really easy to blend. Hello, Carolina. I know you've been looking forward to this from Argentina. Thank you for hopping on. Leanne from Canada. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. There's so many of you here. Um, all right. So they are permanent. They're non-toxic. Uh, and some people have been asking how to store them or how long they last. They have a very, very long shelf life because they have a unique uh, a unique cap design. And so it holds the ink in there. They're not gonna dry out on you. Um, you don't have to really worry about leaving them in a hot car or a cold car. Those types of things really aren't gonna affect these markers. Again, because they're just such high quality. Yeah, and Amy just mentioned some of us have full set syndrome. Um, I I have full set syndrome. I get full sets of certain things like distress inks or lawn fawn ink colors. But I have been very happy with, I think I have, we counted them last time. Um, we did one. I have meant to count them before I started. One second. All right, I can't do the math, but I have nine rows of 18, and that's how many Copics I have. I recently got probably 15 of those um, because Lawn Fawn has a set of markers that they use in classes, and I was lacking those colors, and because I designed for them at trade shows, I wanted to have the same colors as them. So, but for the longest time, I only had like 70, which I know also sounds like a high number, but it doesn't, you don't need a ton. And again, we'll get into that a little bit more in just a minute. Um, do they need to be stored horizontal? No, mine are upright. Um, and I will show you how I store mine um, in a little bit as well. But they can be stored horizontal, vertical, diagonal, hanging from the ceiling, whatever. Thank you, Cynthia and Amy and Lisa. So I have 162 Copics. Um, we all know math is not my strong point. Um, yeah, even if you have full set syndrome, you don't, you don't really need to like jump right in and buy them all because that would be crazy. That would be a lot of money. Um, all right. So what also is great about them is they are refillable. And so when you purchase a marker, it's just like when you purchased your paper trimmer, right? You're going to get new blades for it. Um, maybe my paper trimmer has a track in it that I have to replace every once in a while. You're going to get a new track. So they're a tool. The, the markers are a tool that hold the ink and you can refill them. Um, the nibs are high quality and they're handmade. So that's part of the price involved there. They're handmade nibs. They're tested by, they're tested three times before they leave the factory to make sure that their quality is up to snuff, that the colors are correct, um, that they're writing correctly, all of that stuff. 
uh, yeah, Antonius, that's a good question. Copic does have an app, so you can keep track of which Copics you have and which refills you have. Um, so definitely you can download that for your phone off of their website. Yes, Jennifer, I am going to share with you a list of essential colors in just a little bit, so make sure you stay on for that. And Denise, you asked that question about um, stamping with VersaFine ink, heat embossing with clear. Yes, then you can totally color with your Copics um, because you've heat embossed your ink, that's sealing it in, and there'll be no bleeding problems. But again, in just a just a short minute, I will be sharing what paper and ink I use. Uh, Sherry, I hope after tonight, Copic coloring won't baffle you. I'm gonna make it so, so easy. Awesome. Um, all right, so I'm gonna continue on with the information. Um, so like I said, they're tested three times um, in the factory before they're even shipped out. Um, they never retire any of their colors. So if you bought a color 10 years ago, they're still making it. And it's the same color, like it's spot on. So if you have a marker with R29 in it and you buy a refill 10 years later, it's going to look exactly like it should. Like the consistency is, is spot on. Um, so a couple people are mentioning about the prices going up. Yes, the prices are going up in 2019. The manufacturer in Japan is increasing their prices. So Imagination International, which is who we get our Copics from in the States um, and beyond, um, has to raise their prices. But I honestly don't remember the last time there was a price increase. It's been a long, long time. So unfortunately, that just happens sometimes. You know, prices go up, gas prices go up, cost of living goes up. It's just part of life, right? Um, so I'm just looking at my notes off to the side here. I just wanna make sure that I don't miss anything. So a lot of people have been asking I'm just grabbing a couple markers. Um, a lot of people have been asking why I have the square barreled ones um, because all most people use are the oval sketch. So when I started coloring with Copic markers over 10 years ago, um, I started with the square barreled ones because I tend to like smaller stamped images, like Lawn Fawn. I know we have a lot of people in here from the Lawn Fawn Addicts Facebook group. Um, Lawn Fawn has small images. And so I really liked this small um, bullet nib that comes with the originals. I can still blend really great with them, and I just have fallen in love with them. Um, the sketch brush nib is a super brush and I just sometimes found it way too juicy and hard to stay in the lines and hard to not lay down too much ink where it would bleed out onto my line, which a lot of people have been asking me about that. Why does that happen? If you stamp an image in a Copic friendly ink and you're coloring it, and it bleeds outside of the line, that's usually because you have too much ink. And that was a problem that I was getting with the sketch. So for the most part, all of my Copics are the originals, which are the square ones. Um, I have a few sketch because the sketch has more colors available to them. So a few of my colors that I like are in the sketch form. The other reason why I like the um, Copic Square ones, the originals, is they actually hold more ink. They tend to be the same price as Sketch, but there's more ink in there. So when you buy a refill, you can refill um, the Square one only nine times. It's the same refill bottle, but it will only refill the, the original nine times, but it would refill the Sketch 12 times. So that kind of shows you how um, how much more ink it is in the squares. Now I'm seeing, 
what are the 15 colors you use for Lawn Fawn? Um, I don't have just 15 colors, um, Lori, but I will be sharing in just a few minutes my favorite colors, so stick with me. And people are asking about cheapest place to buy Copics. Um, I don't really have an answer for that. I would definitely check with your local store. Uh, I was just teaching at Papercraft Clubhouse in Connecticut last weekend, and she gives a low everyday rate, and then when you purchase so many of them at once, you also get a better discount. I know Simon says Stamp puts Copics on sale regularly, regularly um, and a bunch of other places as well. So I would just kind of do your homework when it comes to that. Um, yes, so there are two nibs on the square one. So what, what I was going to explain is what I have done with a lot of my square ones. And I'm just looking for one to grab. So here's one right here, my RV14. I have the little bullet point, which I love and use the most. And then what I did with the broad tip that it comes with, I replaced that and added a brush tip that fits the originals. Now this brush tip is exceptionally shorter than the sketch brush tip. Can you guys hopefully see that? So I find that it doesn't let out as much ink and it also um, doesn't, you know, I don't go out of the lines as much and I just don't have a hard time controlling the ink. So that is what is what I have done with some of my personal set. I haven't done that for my class ones. And the brush tip does help you blend in a bigger area a little bit easier. You also can do some neat um, techniques with the brush tip that you necessarily couldn't do with the bullet tip. But I have to say I use the small bullet tip probably 85% of the time. Hello, Melissa and Connie and Sharon. Thank you for hopping on. So Denise is asking, how long does a marker last until it needs to be refilled? That obviously depends on how often you use it. Um, Mr. Harley's going to walk through, of course. Um, so it depends on how often you use it. Lighter colors, you will probably have to refill faster just because you tend to use more of that. Um, but for the average card maker, they're gonna last you a really long time before you have to refill them. So just, um, just definitely keep that in mind. You're not going to need refills for a long, long time. Thank you guys so much for the hearts. I really appreciate it. So let me just tell you a little bit more about the difference um, in the two markers. And then there's also the chow. So I'm actually going to write here. So we have original sketch. And then there's the chow. Um, and I don't own the chow. They are a circular Copic, so this is me drawing a marker, which is really hilarious. Um, but I just want to explain a little bit of the differences, because some people that are on tonight I know are don't own any, and they're just trying to decide what they should do. Um, so Sharon's asking, do most scrapbooking stores offer individual refills? Um, Yes, most most places you can buy Copics, you can buy one refill. And if you have a local store, they might actually do refills for you. Again, just because I was at Papercraft Clubhouse in Connecticut last weekend, I know she offers a refill service. So it's very inexpensive to get your marker refilled, and then you don't have to buy the refills for yourself. Um, I assume you can still blend with the bullet tip, but it just takes more work. So Mary, it actually doesn't take more work and I am gonna demo in just a minute. Um, obviously, if you have a very large area, it might take more work, but in general, my style of stamps that I like, I don't have huge images to color. Um, obviously, I love Lawn Fawn, I love Neat and Tangled, I love Hero Arts, I love Newton's Nook. I love, obviously, Simon Says Stamp. 
um, Concord and Ninth, a lot of their images are smaller. They're not super, super big. I got the skin tones one year ago, and today three of them need a refill a month ago. Skin tones are really light in color, Denise. So yeah, if it's a light color, you probably will have to refill it a bit faster. And something like skin tones, you're probably using that on a lot of different images, right? So um, yeah, and that just means you've been coloring a lot, which is awesome, that's so great. Okay, so we have the original, the sketch, and the chow. So I'm just gonna share with you guys some information. So the originals come in 214 colors. The sketch are 358 and the chow has 180. Um, when you buy a color in the original, it's the same exact color in the sketch. So everything's consistent across the board. So I've known people to just try purchasing the chows first because they're just trying them out. These are the most inexpensive. And then down the road, they add some sketch or originals to their um, collection. Um, then the originals, like I mentioned, it comes, I'm actually gonna switch this out so you have an original original. <laughs> it comes with a small bullet tip and it also comes with a broad tip. And then the sketch comes with a super brush tip and a broad tip. And then the chow comes also with a super brush tip and a broad tip. So the tips are the same on the sketch and the chow. If you wanted to change the tips, there's actually a lot of different ones. Like I mentioned in my original, I have changed it to be brush tips instead of broad tips. So if you wanted to change your tips, the originals have the most um, nibs available. They have nine nibs, different ones, calligraphy and brush. They even have a smaller bullet point than what comes with it. Um, the sketch has three different nibs, and one of those is a small nib, very similar to the original um, bullet point that I'm showing you right here. But the chow has no nibs that you can change into, okay? All of them are refillable, um, and all of them, except for the Chow, work with the Copic airbrush system, which is a whole nother Facebook Live that I'm not gonna really get into. But I just wanted to at least give you guys the information on these three kinds of Copics. Um, so Karen says, I heard if your Copic marker starts to bleed that you need to remove another tip end and that will stop the bleeding. So I travel with my Copics a lot. They fly with me. And if any of them are super juicy when I get to my destination, the best tip to do is to open both ends up and just let them breathe. Um, that will help them from doing any ink burping where the ink just suddenly pours out. Um, and it will help them regulate better. Um, you guys, some of you that follow me on Instagram, I actually have the marker still here because even though I said I was going to throw it away, I haven't given up on it. I have this E53 marker. This is one of my class Copics. That's why it has the tape on it. Um, it has been so problematic for me. I have poured ink out and everything, and it's just super, super juicy. Look, there was a ton of ink in the cap that I just poured on my hand. So I actually talked with my friend Lori. She actually works at Copic and is my go-to for information. And she said that honestly, um, this is a marker I have had for over 10 years. She said if I change both the tips to brand new tips, I probably won't have that problem anymore. So that's kind of why I didn't end up throwing away the marker and I am gonna do that at some point. Awesome, yes, take notes. And that's a good, um, good reminder, Sharon. Um, I am gonna put, mm, I'm gonna to try to put most of this information into a blog post. It'll probably, I hope that it'll be a blog post um, on Wednesday. So I will definitely let you guys know in my Facebook group when that post is available. Awesome, oh great, Sean. I'm glad you're watching it with your mom. That sounds fun. Thank you so much for the hearts. 
Yeah, so if you do have just super juicy markers, I say they're burping on you when a lot of ink comes out. Um, just take both the caps off and kind of just let them breathe. They're not gonna dry out on you, so you don't have to worry about that. That's also something, when you're coloring and you're blending with a few colors, I, I leave the caps off while I'm working with them and you're, they're not gonna dry out on you. You're welcome, Ellen. Yeah, I have been wanting to do this blog post for a long time, so doing this Facebook Live has gotten my butt in gear. Oh, um, Carolina, I hope you're not thinking I'm gonna do bilingual notes. You already know that um, I am not bilingual. <laughs> awesome. All right, so moving on, that was the difference between the three. I've gotten a lot of questions about what ink and what paper to use. Um, yes, you'll be able to watch this recording later. I'll leave it, it's gonna, you'll be able to watch the replay um, right in the Facebook group. Oh, thank you, Barbara. And if you're asking questions that I've already um, answered, I'm not gonna keep, I won't keep repeating myself just because I have so much stuff I wanna share with you guys today. Plus I have the little giveaway I wanna do. Um, so don't think I'm ignoring you, but definitely just if you didn't get here right in the beginning, make sure you go back and watch the beginning. Um, yes, I am gonna show basic blending techniques. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So somebody else asked for information um, on the most affordable paper and ink to use. Now, I'm just gonna be completely honest with you, all right? We're already investing in our Copic markers. They're not the cheapest marker ever, but I've hopefully explained to you what their value is, how they're gonna last for you for so, so long. They're high quality. Um, so since we've invested in really great markers, we need to give them good supplies to work with, right? Um, we don't want to use supplies that are not up to par because then we're gonna think our Copics aren't working correctly and that's not the case at all. Um, so the number one cardstock that I use, and I use this in all of my classes, um, Amy, when she stamps and die cuts all the images for my classes, it's done um, on the Nina Classic Press cover, solar white, 80 pounds, super smooth. Um, and if you've taken a class with me before, that information is on a handout that you have from me. Um, and again, I will post this on the blog post as well. And so the Nina Classic Crest is not cheap. Um, it's approximately, don't quote me, but maybe $45 a ream, $42 a ream. But before you have a heart attack, you only need to use it on your little stamped images, right? Anything that you're stamping and die cutting, um, you don't need to use it for your card bases. Although I do use it for my card bases um, and in my classes and everything, but you don't have to do that. You could just use it for what you're Copic coloring on. Um, I will tell you as a little side note, um, this Nina Classic Crest cardstock is great to ink blend on. Um, distress oxides work great on them. Regular distress works on them. I don't watercolor with this cardstock at all. Again, if you've been following me, you know my favorite cardstock is um, the distress watercolor cardstock. But it's a gr this is just a great, great cardstock. So people are asking me, where do you get it? I'm going to tell you, if you go to your local Target or your local Walmart and you walk down the aisle and you see a Reem and Nina cardstock and you think it's it, it's not. It's going to not be the right weight and it's not going to be the same, um, the same surface. So when you try to use Copics with it, um, they're just not going to work very well because it's not going to be super smooth. Um, so somebody's saying that the video is frozen. It's not frozen for me yet. I am seeing a delay on my iPad. So hopefully maybe hop out of the group and come back in. 
But so back to the cardstock. Um, lots of people carry it. Your local store probably carries it. I know a lot of the stores that I travel and teach at, they buy reams of it and then they package it into sheets of 10 or 15 for you. So it'll be a little bit more affordable. If you have a local print shop, so not Staples, not FedEx Kinko's, but a local mom and pop print shop, just go into them and ask them if they could order you a ream. Most of them can, um, and they would you know, love to do that for you. Lawn Fawn has recently started to package um, the Nina cardstock, so you might find that maybe in the past your store hasn't carried it, but they will be carrying it now. Um, Lawn Fawn was trying to make it easier because everybody asks them as well what cardstock um, do they use and do this, does the design team use. Um, and yes, Simon Says Stamp carries it as well. So check your local store, a local printer. There's plenty of plenty of places and you don't have to buy a whole ream at once because again, you can just use your stamped images. And then as far as ink goes, um, my ink, the ink that I use is the Lawn Fawn, but it's the Jet Black Premium Ink Pad. So it's not to be confused with their black licorice. That, that ink pad is not Copic friendly. It's a really nice black ink pad and we do use it in my classes to stamp sentiments. Um, but the Jet Black Premium Ink Pad from Lawn Fawn will work with Copics and with water coloring. So it's like a win-win situation for me. I actually um, have it really low in the ink holder on my wall and that's kind of like where you've seen Mr. Harley sleeps and I'm always bothering him because I have to get it out because I'm either watercoloring or I'm Copic coloring and it's always this ink pad that I use. Um, back in the day, the only ink pad available really was Memento and I never loved it. It never really stamped crisply um, and it was kind of purple-ish in the, the black color. So we, I just, you know, obviously had to use it, but as soon as there was an alternative, I got rid of all my Memento ink pads, even though I had a lot of them for classes, and I have replaced it with the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink pad. Um, so Sharon was asking what makes the paper so special. So it's the surface of the paper that it's a super smooth, it's the weight of it. Um, and it just takes to the Copic markers really, really well. So Sharon, I know you've been in a few of my classes and that is exactly what has been in the class kits is the Nina Classic Crest. Um, so Kathy, I'm not sure which what you've seen on sale and was wondering if it was the same exact one. Um, Yes, the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink does dry immediately. You stamp it and you can color right away. And definitely those of you that are taking notes or if you're watching on your phone, screen cap this because if you go to um, Staples or Walmart or Target and you think you're finding this cardstock, you're probably not. It does not come in a clear packaging. It comes in a yellow paper wrap. Um, and so you could get confused and not get the right one. It has to be all of these words, <laughs> all of the things. Yes, the Nina cardstock is a bright white. Awesome. Well, welcome, Joy. You can always go back and watch more um, of the beginning later. Okay, so I think we should get to some coloring. What do we say, right? taking all the notes. Awesome, Jessica. I'll just have you write my blog post for me. So before we get into the coloring, I mentioned the other night, um, this Facebook group has reached over 2,000 people and I'm just blown away and so excited that I thought I would do a little giveaway. So after um, I get off of the live, I am going to go through the comments and randomly pick one winner and that one winner, I have the limited edition Lawn Fawn set from Stamptember, um, Nutty or Nice, and the coordinating dies are in here as well, and that is what I'm going to give away. So 
hopefully a lot of you are able to catch the live and I will announce the winner just after this live ends. So at least make sure you leave at least one or two or three comments um, because that'll help me um, see who was on for me to be, able, to be able to pick a winner. All right. Oh gosh, Donna, that would be so cute. All the things t-shirts. So yeah, so this is what I'll be giving away. All right. So a lot of times people are like, well, Oh, one more thing I wanted to explain before we get to coloring. I'm so sorry. I have all my little like things that I set up over here and I'm getting ahead of myself here. So when you look at a Copic marker, um, a lot of the times, like with this um, pink marker here, a lot of the times people will say RV14. Um, but when you're actually trying to break down the formula of the color to help you pick what will blend well with, with itself, um, it's actually RV1 and 4. And this might help clear up some confusion. So looking at um, the, the numbering system on a Copic, the, the letter or the two letters is the color family. So BG49 is, you know, blue-green or RV is a red-violet, and that's a color family. And then the first number, so the four or the one, represents the saturation of the color. And a zero is a very high saturation, and a nine is a less saturation. And then the second number is the brightness. And a zero is a light and a nine is a dark. So even though, again, and I do this in my classes, I call it R29, E33, but it's really an E3 and three, or R2 and nine. I'm just looking at the comments. Um, Tammy says that when she wins the prize, I can just bring it to the farm to see her next weekend because I'll be teaching at Firefly Farm in Minnesota. Um, awesome, Marcella. I hope that this tutorial gives you some confidence that you can try with Copics. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you, guys. I'm so glad that you're finding this helpful, and I'm trying not to take up all of your time, but there's just a lot to share. Yep. Yeah, so this is very important because if you are gonna try to pick your own markers to blend, I am gonna share with you guys um, my choices, my, my top picks, but if you were you know, picking your own, you wanna try to pick within the same color family to blend. Now these are just these are just standards to start with. It doesn't mean that you couldn't blend two colors out of a color family, um, but to make things easier when you're just starting out, you want to stay within the same color family. And then what you want to do is for the numbering system, you want to be four to six numbers apart. So don't treat this like a four nine. I mean, I'm sorry, don't treat this like a 49. You want to treat it like a 4 and a 9. Um, and when you pick another color to blend with it, you want to be 4 to 6 numbers apart. So these two colors would blend well together because we have a 4 and a 3 and a 9 and a 2. Does this make sense, hopefully? <clears throat> I'm just checking comments. Oh, thank you, Diane. I really appreciate that. Lisa, I promise I'm gonna share with you the order of blending in just a minute. I was getting to that and then I remembered I wanted to explain this, which I think is very important and helps take out a lot of confusion. Yes, Sarah, you're welcome. Yes, thank you, Barbara. So saturation is the intensity of the color. Um, so that's right. So a high, um, a low saturation, a high number is more washed out looking. Perfect. Good, good way of explaining that. Thank you. Yeah, Lauren, four to six numbers is just 
again, a good way to start. You could have it be nine numbers apart and you could probably still blend it. But when you're just getting started, you wanna try to get things as easy as possible for you so you you know can learn how to do it. <laughs> a flow chart or a cheat sheet. Well, I am gonna be have a blog post up hopefully by Wednesday. Yes. Crystal, I'm not sure if you took the class with me at Colorful Creations, but we did talk about this, but it was a long time ago. Aw, thank you, Lindsay. We actually sat next to each other in the Copic certification, so obviously I was listening more. <laughs> I love these comments. Okay, so moving along. So now what I want to share with you guys is how Copics work. And I'm just gonna move this writing because I think it'll be distracting. All right, so this is just a piece of piece of the Nina um, cardstock. And what I wanna first show you guys is, um, and I'm just trying to find a Copic that I still have my broad tip on because it'll just make more sense. Oh, and these are what the refill bottles look like, you guys. They're the same refill for all three kinds of markers, so they'll all look the same. Um, I'm not going to get into how to refill or anything in this video just because I already have so many other things I want to share with you, but that's what the refill looks like. Um, okay, so can you see all the teal markers I keep uh, pulling out? Um, so BG13, this is one of my favorite teals. I want to show you guys with just one marker how you can shade. You can essentially shade. Um, because as you layer a Copic marker, it is going to get darker and darker. Yes, Sharna's trying to clear up. I might have missed some confusion. This is a BG 4 and 9, not 49. Even though that's what we all say, um, it's a 4 and a 9. Hi, Jean. I've seen all of the awesome stuff you've been doing, so I totally get why I haven't seen any paper crafting from you. No worries, I'm so happy that you're popping on and just kinda watching for a few minutes. And I will let Chris and Mr. Harley know you said hi. And we have a new baby, Mr. Gus Gus, so be sure to check out my feed if you haven't seen him yet. Okay, so yes, it's BG4 and nine. And if that wasn't clear to you, again, you can always watch the replay, okay? So back to this, with one Copic marker, you can get actually shade. Oh, this one doesn't have a broad tip. Darn it. All right. All right, we're gonna just go with this blue. B6, B16, even though I would say B16. Um, so what you can do is actually shade with one marker. So if I do one stripe, this is the true color of B16. Okay, so I just did one single swipe. But then if I do a second stripe on top, it's already getting darker. And if I do a third and a fourth and a fifth, and even this last one, like, or even if I just keep going, it's going to just get darker and darker and darker and darker and darker. So with one marker, you can get darker results. So you could keep um, adding color where you want a shadow. Does this make sense? So for instance, um, in my class this fall, we're coloring the overalls on the Scarecrow of the Happy Harvest Lawn Fawn set. And I don't, I mean, it already involves a lot of colors. So I have just one blue marker in there and the pocket on the front of his overalls, we're coloring it once and then the rest of his overalls, you go over it two or three times, so they'll look darker than the pocket. So this right away is why you don't need a ton of colors, because you can kind of cheat with one color, okay? Another trick that you can do so that you don't need a lot of colors is purchase yourself a gray. 
Um, I would probably recommend the W6. I tend to use more warm grays. I know some people tend to use more cool grays. Um, that's kind of a personal preference. But purchase yourself a gray marker. And if we had a heart, I'm just going to draw, draw a heart here. Another supply I highly recommend buying is this Memento Dual Marker. It has a brush tip that I never use, but it has a nice fine tip pen part. So if something doesn't stamp great or you want a darker stamped line, you can retrace it with this nice fine point pen. So I keep this stored um, right with my Copic markers. So that's what I just drew the heart with because it's Copic friendly. And if we wanted to um, do some shading here with just one color, the trick is to also use a gray. How do you keep from overlapping on large areas? Um, Sherry, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that question. So if you could maybe explain it a bit more. Denise, what's the difference between warm and cool? Um, What's the difference between a blue and, an, and a red? Um, it just has a cool tone to it or a warm tone to it. And you'll see that in a couple minutes because I do have shading with a, both a warm and a cool. Yeah, cool has a little bit more blue undertones. Correct, Cynthia. I do that as well. The brush tip of this marker, if you fussy cut your image and you don't want any white on the edges, you could use the brush tip to do that. Is there any way to lighten a dark color like some of the deep reds without looking washed out or bleeding? Uh, that's a good question, Connie. I will kind of touch on that in just a minute. Okay, so I have my heart drawn, and if I wanted to have a nice shadow on the left-hand side, but I only have one red marker, what you can do is take your gray marker and draw in wherever you want the shadow, and then you can take your red marker, and I do little circles when I'm coloring with Copics so that I will get nice, smooth application. And you go right over it. And then you can kind of see where that line is from the gray. I'm just gonna do some more little circles, half on, half off, and blend that out. And you can go back in with the gray and go back in with the red. And this is something that you can do really with any color and kind of cheat your way into shading before you own a lot of Copics. When coloring a large area, how do you keep going, keep from overlapping your color to keep it one color only? Lorinda, that's a great question, and that's what I'm going to share with you guys in just a minute on how I do my shading. So that's coming up just next, so hold tight. Yes, little circles. So again, if you have your shape that you're coloring in, whatever it may be, um, you know, I'll see people kind of in my classes sometimes do lines. No, no, no. Just do little circles and work your way around the image. I don't keep going over the same area. And then that way, I know I'm getting a true R29 or R29, right? Because I'm not doing what's happening up here where I'm getting... Um, a deeper, darker color of the R29, okay? I'm totally going out of the lines because I'm talking and coloring from far up. But anyways, you guys get the point. Awesome. I'm glad you guys are liking this. Brenda, that's a good question on where do I always shade, and I'm going to talk about that in just a quick second. All right. So I'm going to move on. So that's, that's my trick here, right? Somebody asked um, how to lighten up a color without making it look muted. Mr. Harley's going to walk through again. 
because he has no manners. Um, so the way that you can lighten up a color is if you have, I'm just trying to think what color to do. Well, let's just take this W8. This is a warm gray, W8. This is actually, um, I use this a lot. And that's, if I can tell you anything else too, don't disregard the grays. You're gonna actually use grays more than you would think. And they're not as fun to buy because you're not picking out all the fun teals and pinks and colors but you'll use grays way more than you think. So don't look, don't cast those aside or think you don't need them. Um, w8 is actually what I use for black. It's a very, very dark gray. Um, and so like, again, if I'm coloring Mr. Harley, which I do a lot on kitty stamps, I use the W8 to fill in all of his black spots on him um, because it's dark, but it doesn't take away the stamped line. So you won't lose the detail of the stamped image. Hey, I love gray too. I just know a lot of people, it's way more fun to pick out colors to buy. Um, Mr. Harley, everybody's saying hi to you. He's sitting on the desk just to the right of me. But, all right, so how can you lighten up colors? So if I have something colored with W8, which I'm just gonna color a box here, what you can do is take a lighter version of, this, of the same color family. So in this instance, I'm taking a W4, and I am going to go over the W8, and it is going to lighten it up. Obviously, if I did like a W2 or W1, it would lighten it up even more. Hopefully you guys can see that. Hey, Rebecca. So hopefully you can see the differences there. And so you can always lighten it up um, by using a lighter color in the same color family to take color away. So let's see, this is that B16 again. Hey, Shari. You're welcome, Catherine. I'm glad you guys are finding this helpful. And now this is a B04. So if I go over, you guys can see how it lightens it up. And what's really cool too is um, depending what you're doing, um, depending what you're doing, you can take a darker color. Maybe you have a shirt on a stamped image or a dog and you wanna add polka dots, but you can take a lighter color. So sorry, I'm like flipping through the colors. This is the BG49 and now I'm using the BG32. But you can take the lighter colors and lighten up and do patterns. Actually, you know what, the BG32 is so close to the four, so that three is so close to the four, it's not gonna work as good. So I am actually going to grab, I think the 13 will work better. No, hold on one minute. Hold on. Do the BG10 and you can get nice little polka dots. So, somebody's asking, um, Kim is asking about colorless blender. I do not bring a colorless blender to classes with me. And the reason why is because the colorless blender, first of all, it does not blend. It is like, it lies. The name of it is a lie. It is actually like a bleach pen, okay? It takes color away. But I don't bring it to my classes with me because the formula is so strong that it ends up wreaking more havoc than good, okay? Because people will wanna use it in class because maybe they made an error. I'm using it right now. And they'll start using it 
but it ends up making things worse. It ends up making your image bleed out. Um, it just is really, really finicky. So I usually tell people, like, if I accidentally go out of the lines a little bit, I will take a white gel pen and just dab it where I accidentally went out of the lines. I don't actually ever, hardly ever, use this blender pen because it's just such a strong formula. The way I used to explain it when um, I used to teach Copic 101 at the store I used to manage is, <laughs> yes, Leanne, colorless blender is the devil. Thank you. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. But what I used to tell people is, think of it like a Tide pen. You know, like those Tide pens that you can um, quickly rub a stain out if you're at a restaurant and you accidentally spilt something. And it looks, it almost sometimes makes things look worse from the, like, in the beginning. But then when it dries, it looks better, right? So the blender pen is very similar. Like, if I accidentally go out of the lines... I'll use the broad tip and I'll push the color back into the lines a little bit, but then I stop. Even if it doesn't look perfect just yet, I'll stop and let the paper dry and see if it ends up looking okay. Because nine times out of 10, it will, but if I keep doing it until it looks okay while it's wet, it'll end up becoming a mess. So hopefully um, that makes sense. Thank you, Shari, for uh, answering some questions on the difference between warm and cool grays. I thought we had touched on that, but it seems like some people still have some more questions. Um, yes, the markers will not contaminate each other, Joyce. Um, something else that you can do, and it won't ruin your markers, is... I'm going to freak everybody out, but I have my W8 right here. I'm going to touch it to my BG10. And then when you go to color it out, eventually you'll color it out enough. And, you know, this is actually a cool technique you might want to do to add color to something. But you can see now my BG10 is perfectly clean again. So I didn't ruin it. You will not contaminate the markers. It's actually a technique um, to do a tip-to-tip -tip, um, type blend, which I'm not going to really get into tonight because I still have so much to share with you. Terry, we're going to talk about shading in just a second, so hold tight. You're welcome, Amy. I'm so happy to share this information with you guys. And I talk about some of this in my classes, but we're also doing so much else in my classes. Sometimes, you know, it's hard to share it all. Um, yes, Nicole, you will see a sample of the different grays in just one second. And Lisa, we already talked about the Copics going up in price at the beginning of the video, so you can watch the replay for that. Hey, Dana, thanks for hopping on. Late is fine. You can always watch the replay. Yes, Kelly does the tip to tip a lot on her lawn fawn videos. Awesome. Okay, so moving on. Next, what I want to show you is another way that you guys can save money on Copics, all right? We already talked about how you can buy a gray marker and get some blending, um, but now I'm going to share with you guys how I actually only do two-color blending mostly. I don't do three-color blending. Now, remember, this is me. I, I color smaller images. You know, we talked about this, like lawn fawn images, neat and tangled images, um, Newton's Nook. Uh, lot, I mean, lots of brands, but my images that I am, tend to be drawn to are smaller images. Um, even, you know, this mermaid right here from the Greeting Farm. Um, again, two color blending. So... Again, this will help you in saving money when you're buying Copics. Some people ask, should I buy sets of Copics or individuals? I would buy individual colors. I would never buy a set of Copics. Um, 
no offense to Copics, but those sets are not really made for paper crafters. Those are made more for the magna artists or the graphic artists, and they're doing different things with them. But you're going to get them home, and you're going to kind of be bummed out because you're not going to have the blending capabilities that you're looking for. Um, come to Cleveland, Ohio. So, Amy, I'm teaching um, at Legacy Paper Arts, which is in Powell, Ohio, in October, and I'm teaching at Stamplistic, which is also in Ohio, and it's escaping me what town that's in. But check my class schedule on my website. Um, ink refills, will they ever dry out? No, your ink refills will never dry out. I mean, I don't want to say never, like, you know, maybe in 75 years, but they're not going to dry out. The, the um, way that they design the bottle and how the cap goes in, they're not going to dry out on you. Hey, Liz, happy you could pop on. Kimberly, there are some stores in the Carolinas that have talked to me, but we just haven't made it work yet. All right. So just because everybody's asking um, about... Um, me teaching in their area. I pretty much travel anywhere there's a store that invites me to teach. So if you guys have a local store, um, let them know about me. Um, if they carry Lawn Fawn and I will chat with them and see what we can do. Um, I know a lot of people have mentioned um, Denver or the Colorado State Okay, uh, Kimberly, go to Lawn Fawn's website and in the footer they have a store locator. So you'll be able to find the stores that are in South Carolina and North Carolina that carry Lawn Fawn. Yes, I'll be impressed. Oh, I love all the hearts, thank you. Okay, two color blending. So this will help save money because you won't need to have as many colors, right? So we have two color blending. We're gonna color a pink shark. And people have asked light to dark, dark to light. People have asked how do you determine a light source. Um, people have asked all kinds of different things like that. And this is what's gonna start to answer those questions for you guys. Um, so I do two color blending mostly. Sometimes I'll do a three color blend if it's a color that's hard to blend. Blues are tricky to, to blend. Uh, purples are tricky. Pinks are tricky sometimes too. So again, I will do a two color or a three color blend to help make it easier, but a two color blend is still possible. Um, so, and the way that I do it is I actually start dark to light. Somebody asked earlier, um, how do you keep, if you're coloring over and over, how do you keep your true light light? And this is why I start dark to light. If I were to color this shark all the light pink and then add the dark and then go try to blend the dark out, I'm going to tend to keep coloring over the light. And so then, like I showed you guys with my blue stripes up here, I'm gonna keep going over the light and it's gonna eventually become really dark and it's almost gonna look just like the dark that I'm blending with. So I'm not gonna have a nice gradient, right? So what I do is I start with the dark, I blend that out, and then once I'm happy with my shading, I then fill the rest of the item in with the light. And, and I'm gonna show you guys, so stick with me. Um, it's, I mean, it's a lawn fawn shark, so it could be a baby shark. This is from the little Dunna set from uh, from lawn fawn. Dunna, dunna, dunna. Um, so yeah, so I start with the dark, and I, <coughs> excuse me, let me take a sip of water. I've been talking um, a lot. Thank you, Amy, for linking my classes page. I really appreciate that. Um, so I start with the dark and 
I think another thing that people stress out about is what is the light source? Where's the light coming from? What is the light doing? And I don't really want you to stress out about that because that's going to be something that's going to kind of stop you in your tracks and you're not going to want to color because you're going to be so nervous about the light source. So what I tell people in my classes is to only shade, well, to shade left side and crevices. Um, and as long as you're consistent on your whole card and all your images and always do left side and crevices, as long as you're consistent, you're kind of faking it till you make it. It's going to look good on your card. Nobody's going to question where the light source was. Um, and it's going to look really cute. There are some times that I don't do left side. Um, I did a card with the submarine from Your Sublime, the Lawn Fawn set. And because that a submarine is round in shape or like a sphere, we did shading on both ends and kept it light in the center. But in general, um, left side and crevices. Yes, Gail, I'm still live. I'm still talking away here. Um, thanks, Catherine. Thank you, Shari, for linking the store locator. Are Copics reworkable? Yes. You can go back to something you colored a year later and rework them if you wanted to. Okay, so no worrying about the light source. We're going to do two color blending and we're going to start with our dark color first. This is all breaking probably all the things you've heard from other people, but this is what works for me. And I really think this is what works for people in my classes um, that are newer to Copics and to help, um, you know, make it less intimidating. Yeah, forget the light source. So left side, I'm going to add a little line of the RV14, the dark on his tail. I'm going to add a little line on his left side of his fin. Then we have his little underbelly here, which I would call crevice. And then that's that's it. That's my shading so far, okay? Now I'm gonna take the RV13 and I'm gonna do little circles right on that dark line. And I'm doing it, I'm not pressing hard, I'm just repetitively doing little circles, half on, half off the line, until the line disappears so that it blends into one. So you no longer see that line anymore. Um, RV14 and RV13 are the colors that I'm using. One thing that I see when people are just starting out is that they'll do the little circles, but not long enough. You'll still see the line. Uh, Megan, I think I have to switch to the originals. Don't switch, but just buy some originals. Don't get rid of your sketches. That's fine. I have some sketches. Uh, yeah, Kelly, we did talk about the tips a little bit in the beginning, so just watch the replay. But I do almost 80% of the time use the bullet tip of my originals. I have brush tips on some of my colors that I do use as well. Correct, Joy. I said approximately four to six numbers away, but yes, these are close in number because it's just what I have. Sometimes, you know, you gotta work with what you have. So now I'm going up here and doing little circles just until I don't see the line from the RV14. Basically, I'm saturating the cardstock even though they're alcohol-based markers, it's the cardstock's wet while you're doing this, and it's saturating so that the two colors can blend together. Little circles, and I just keep, and I work in one little area, right? I'm not doing it all over, I'm working in one little area until that line disappears, and then I move away and work in another area. Because they are alcohol-based, with the alcohol evaporating, it's easier to work in a little area so that the color doesn't um, evap, so the alcohol doesn't evaporate. Hey Sarah, we already talked about why I like originals over sketch at the beginning of the video, so you can watch the replay later. 
Yep, Shari, that's a good suggestion, two to three numbers apart. And now that I have all of the dark areas blended, you could color in the light right now. But what I tend to do at home, not in a class, um, is I'll go back in with the dark and add it kind of half of where I added it before, just to really add some more definition. Mr. Harley's gonna walk through again. Hey, Mr. Harley. Settle in his box. And now I'm going back in with the RV13 and little circles over the dark that I just laid. Yep, nothing wrong with having the originals. They're my favorite. I know I'm in the minority in the paper crafting world, but I do have to say, people in my classes really seem to like them. They're a little bit more user-friendly in the beginning. All right, yeah, Kitty wants the fish. So now that I have all the shadow blended out, what I'm gonna do is I'm still working with the RV13. I'm going to start to fill in the rest of the shark, but I'm only doing a little circles, but only going over the area once. This is the trick, right? I think if I laid the RV13 down first, I would have had a tendency to keep going over it and I don't wanna have lost the true light of the RV13. So now that I have it all filled in with the RV13, I can see some of the line from my blended two colors, right? So what I'm gonna do is take little circles, blend out on the line, and just until it disappears enough and blends into the light. And I'm not pushing hard with my markers. Um, I'm just gently doing little circles. Sometimes I even do little dabs if it's a little area. The shark is a nice big area, so I don't have that problem as much. But now you can see I have a nice blended shark here with just two colors. Yeah, two colors is less intimidating because sometimes you're not sure what to do with three. I will quickly show you guys what I do with three if you want. So I'll do a teal shark with three colors. I'll do uh, BG32, BG13, and BG49. Believe it or not, the 32 is the lightest color. Two of these markers, I do have the brush tip on that I've changed my broad tip for, so I am gonna utilize that. So when I have a very, very dark color, I actually am not gonna use, um, actually you guys can't see the cap, sorry about that. I'm actually not gonna use this dark color until very, towards the very end. So the dark that I'm gonna start with for the shadowing is the BG13. And if you guys ever have questions, what's the lightest, what's the darkest, I don't understand the numbering system, I almost always have a little scrap of Nina near me, like this here, where I kind of scribble it out and kind of look and go, okay, which is the darker, which is the lighter, right? And I don't even sometimes read the numbers. I just kind of do that and go by my eye. I'm so happy you guys are loving this video. That makes me happy. Yeah, if your ink is bleeding outside of the lines, it could be the ink pad that you're using. Remember I said I like the Jet Black Premium from Lawn Fawn. Make sure you're using a Copic friendly ink. It could be the paper if you're not using a good quality cardstock. Or it could just be because you have too much ink you're laying down, which is something that I had a problem with when I use sketch markers. And that's why I don't use the sketch markers. So now um, I'm gonna do three color blending. I'm gonna do it fairly quickly because I wanna move on and show you guys my favorite blends. But I'm laying down the dark, which is really in the instance of the, of the three color, it's the middle color. I'm taking the light, the BG32, and blending that out.
Yep, I always test my blends on scratch paper. Even though I know, like I know I always blend R29 and R35, but I still just test it out. Because sometimes I want to see if that's really the color I want to go with, right? On my card. Um, somebody asked me in the group if I own the hex chart from Sandy Allnack. I do not. Um, I just haven't felt the need for it, so I don't have it, but I know a lot of people have found that really useful. Now I'm going to go back in a little bit more with the medium color. And I'm going back in with the light to blend that out. You can see how quick it can be too. Um, this is also why I do two color blending mostly um, or even three color blending, but I'm a quick colorer. I don't want it to take forever because I don't have the patience. I know some people do and that's fine. That's their fun. I'd much rather take longer water coloring than Copic coloring, but that's just me. I'm so glad I keep looking up at the comments. I see people are learning a lot, so that just makes me so happy. All right, so I have that kind of blended out. It needs a little bit more work, but now I'm gonna go in with the BG49, and this is really dark, so I'm just gonna put a little bit in some of the crevices and some of the left. Not a lot because it's so, so dark. I'm gonna go back in with the medium color and blend that out, even dabbing a little bit. That's a good idea. Kim says she finds the hex chart helpful when she's buying colors so she doesn't get colors too close together. So that's a good tip from somebody who has it. Yeah, Rebecca, this has been my new favorite color combo too. It matches the new Really Rainbow Christmas papers from Lawn Fawn so well, these three teal colors. Been using it a ton. I love that Lawn Fawn is a lover of teal. And now I'm taking the very lightest Copic and I'm blending out the line from the shadowing. I mean, most of you knew that if we were gonna be doing anything with color, teal would show up eventually, right? On a Jen Shirkus project. All right, and then we have our three colored shading. Um, yep, B BG, BG, not B. BG13, BG32, BG49. All right. So now, what I want to share with you guys, and again, if you're watching on your phone or your mobile device, um, you might want to get ready to screen cap. But basically, the steps of the two color blend are right here. So um, I was looking for my pen, but right here, remember we used the RV14 and the RV13. So here was just RV14, and then here blend with the RV13. Here we did a little bit more RV14, and then blend with RV13, and then fill in with RV13. So that's how we do a two color blending. So you don't have to get three markers to blend. Awesome. Yay, Diana. I hope you guys do try this out. And if you do are inspired to try some Copic coloring, definitely share it in the Facebook group. Remember, I love when you guys share. Yeah, so much easier to do two color and so much easier to lay the dark down first. I just can't stress enough. Does that mean you always have to lay down the dark first? No. But 
I think it just makes things easier. Good, I'm glad you guys are taking screenshots. And remember, I am gonna share all of this on my blog on Wednesday. Awesome, yay. Yep, reds are tricky. I'm gonna share with you guys in just a minute my blends. Awesome, okay. So, now what I'm gonna share with you guys are my favorite color combos. I know a lot of people were asking for this. So these are my favorite two color combos that I use the most. This is 15. Um, it's actually only 29 markers though because I repeated a brown over here. Um, so I'm just gonna read through the colors for you guys. I know some of you said you're actually taking notes. So I wanna just um, share this with you. So it's RV13 and RV14, which we've already played with. Somebody was just mentioning reds are tricky. I like to use R29 and R35. For oranges, I actually have a few different combinations I like, um, but I went with this one just for tonight's tutorial, but R04 and R09. Yellows, Y17 and Y15. Greens, I like to, I wanted to show you guys a more limey green and a regular green. Um, so YG17 and YG23. G02 and G07, that's more like a Kelly green, a truer green. B02 and B00 for a blue. BG32 and BG13, we already played with tonight. For like a more, a less hot pink, but a pink, I use the RV32 and RV34. Um, purples, I have a more gray purple, is BV31 and BV23. I promise you guys I'll put this on my blog. I just have to take pictures of it tomorrow in the light. Uh, another purple, V01 and V06. Um, and then I wanted to show you guys a lighter brown and a darker brown. I have to say, well, I'll tell you about that in just a minute. E33, E37. So then I repeated the E37 and E59 for a darker. And then those of you that were asking what the difference between cool and warm gray looks, you can see it really clearly here. For cool grays, I use C3 and C6. And warm gray, I use W4 and W6. Now what I wanted to mention, um, now I forgot what I was gonna mention when I was talking about the browns. Oh, easy colors to blend, to try practicing. Browns are very, very forgiving and very easy to blend. I also think this green combination, the YG17, YG23, is very, very easy to blend. And then also the grays. The grays are, I think the warm grays are the easiest, um, but the grays are easy to blend. So again, I will share this on my blog, um, so don't feel like, you know, you have to be writing all this down, or if you're not sure how to screen cap it, I do see your comments, some of you aren't sure. Um, this will be on my blog on Wednesday, and I'll be sure to let you guys know in the um, group when that post is live. So something else, um, one other thing, yep, I know somebody asked about snowmen, somebody asked about hair and skin tone, I got it, I got my list here. Um, but one other thing I wanted to quickly show that I will be sharing um, on my on my um, website is the colors that I recommend you start with. Um, so I went through my colors and basically chose the ones that I use the most and the ones that I have multiples of for my class Copics. If I have multiples of R29 because we're using it on multiple cards in a class, I feel that's a really good color to buy, right? Because I use it so much. So I'm gonna also share this on my website. 
Um, I actually forgot how many there were. Seventeen times three. <clears throat> so I think that's a much more manageable number than thinking you need to buy all 300 plus markers, right? Um, when I used to manage a store on Cape Cod, I used to manage Colorful Creations. I know there's a few people in the in the live tonight who shopped there and also took my Intro to Copic class. It was an expensive class, but we set everybody up with um, 32 markers to start and then learned all about them. Um, so I truly feel you don't have to start with a lot of Copics um, to be able to get started. So don't feel overwhelmed with that or think that they're gonna be super expensive. Um, hi, Tiffany, thanks for hopping on. You can always catch the beginning part on replay. Um, but I also just want you guys to know, I mean, even just coloring one color and getting a nice um, filled in image without any streaks makes Copics worth it, right? Um, I'm gonna just move this up because there's more. Um, but I just, yeah, I just can't stress enough. You don't need a lot to get started. Really, everybody should feel like they can have Copics and color with them. Um, it's definitely doable for everybody. Yep, I just moved it, Diane. Um, it's a long list, so I couldn't fit it all on the camera at once. Yes, 51 is much more manageable, right? And there's even a few in this that you might be like, you know what, I don't want those, and you don't need them, right? Um, also, another tip that I tell people, um, is like if you do take a class at a store or with me is pick one card you like from the class that we took and buy the Copics just for that one card right because you're going to want to go home and recreate it so for instance this one I used my favorite teal combinations and some grays and some skin tones and a couple pinks buy those markers and then the next time you go to buy markers for another card that you like, you'll be like, oh, I don't need the grays. I don't need the browns. I already have those. And so that's another tip is find a card you like and buy the colors for that one. Um, and then, you know, you'll be able to build up your collection that way. Are skin tones and hair colors included in your recommended 52 starter list? Yes, Ellen, which I will talk about in just a minute, but the skin tones that I use and the hair colors that I use are in this list. Um, Denise, I keep seeing your question. I, I, I do see it. It's just taking me a minute to get to all the questions. Um, do you have a coral and peach combo? So if I was going to do a corally color, um, I would probably use these, the R22 and the R32. Yeah, perfect, Tiffany. Just pick all of Shari's cards and basically buy all the Copics she uses. So the gray that I use for outlining, you can use either a warm gray or a cool gray. It depends on the look that you want for the card. If you have a pattern paper you're gonna use on the card that has more cool tones to it, you'll use a cool gray. If it's a warm, you'll use warm. And you wanna use a, a lighter color, so a W2 or a CO. All right, so now somebody had asked in the group what I do for blending snowmen. So what I did here is I stamped this cute little snowman and this Yeti from um, Neat and Tangled. They're two different stamp sets, but they are both um, Neat and Tangled. And my actual thing that I normally do for snowmen or... Um, white things is I actually end up outlining in a light gray. So uh, right now I'm outlining in W2. And when you outline a white image with gray, it's actually going to make the white look whiter than the paper is. It's like an optical illusion, which is really cool. 
So I'm just outlining this whole thing. And once you end up coloring the rest of it and everything, it will end up making the image look whiter than it actually is. So I'm just gonna do some quick coloring. I've got W8 right here. And then I'm gonna go in with W6. And I'm just blending that W8 out. And then I'm just gonna go back in with the W8. And then to save time, I'm not gonna do any shading on the scarf, but I am just gonna color it in. I really just want you guys to see, once we add color to everything else, how the white parts of the snowman are really gonna look whiter because um, we outlined it in gray. We'll color his boots too. add a little brown to his hair. I outlined it with W2. Thank you guys for answering. I'm trying to keep up on comments, but it's hard when I'm looking down at what I'm coloring. Did you outline it on the outside of the lines? Yes, I did. And I'll put it back up close to the camera in just a second. So you can see it right here. So Sharon, I didn't see your first question, but I did see, I kind of think I get the gist of your question. She's asking what happens when you die cut it. So yeah, in this instance, I might not die cut this image, right? It might be a one layer card or I might do some masking. Or you can still, when you die cut it with the coordinating dies, you're still gonna have that white edge and you could still add the W2 to it. Sorry guys, thank you. My video is delayed, but um, my chat is not. So I didn't see that it was um, off camera and I apologize. All right, now for skin tones. I don't have a whole lot of different colors that I personally use for skin tones. Um, my quick go-to is to use an R00, and I color their skin, and then I take an R20, and I just touch it to their cheeks to rosy them. Okay, um, another skin tone combination that I do is E00. So I'm just gonna color this mermaid up here. I don't have like a rundown of all the ethnicities and what colors to use. I just use what I have for markers, right? And then I'll use a little E02 up in her hairline to add some shadow, maybe on the side of her face. And then, yes, I will definitely take a picture of all of this for my post, thank you. And then I'm just gonna blend it out. And then I am gonna go back and use the R20 and rosy her cheeks. That's just something I always like to do. I just think it adds character to it. All right. As far as hair goes, somebody had asked me what I do for blonde hair. 
And the colors that I use um, for blonde hair, and this is going to kind of break a rule a little bit, but I use the Y26, Y21, and YR21. So like I said, you can go out of a color family, all right? Um, Carolina, if you want the really small nibs, you can get them for the bullet point side of your sketch. So, when I color hair, I was trying to see, one minute, let me find my other, um, my mermaid card I shared with you guys at the beginning. My desk has become... A Copic mess but okay so this is how I color hair um, I don't um, I don't spend a whole lot of time on it I just want to show definition I want to show low lights and highlights a little bit but I don't spend a whole lot of time um, Megan, she's one of the newer members on the Lawn Fawn design team. She does beautiful coloring of hair. Um, I don't do that just because again, like I mentioned, I kind of want to just color things quickly and make a card. I don't spend a ton of time on it just because I want to do more, I guess, you know, it's just the way that I do things. Um, so the way that I do the hair is I take the YR, um, YR21 and I start putting it down, like I kind of mentioned, left side. This is gonna kind of be my dark. So I'm gonna kind of do the left side of her hair splits here. Obviously under her chin and around her body here. I'm doing a little bit of a thicker line instead of just drawing a straight line. And I'm just gonna do a little bit right in there, okay? And then I'm gonna take the Y21 and I'm gonna do little circles I'm gonna actually um, switch. I wanna not use the brush tip just because I don't want to. All right, so I'm doing little circles to kind of blend that color out. Um, oh, thank you, Shari. Megan's last name is Quinn. Shari, maybe you could also list her Instagram handle if you know it off the top of your head. So I'm just doing the little circles. This is exactly what we did on the shark to blend that out. I'm gonna go back in with a little bit more YR21. Kind of, I basically tell myself in my head like half of where I put it before. Not everywhere, but just to kind of add a little bit more definition in the dark. So if I was coloring black hair, like when I color Mr. Harley's black spots on his body, he's my kitty if you don't know, and he's a tuxedo cat, so he's black and white. I use W8 and I blend out with W6 and W4. So now that I have that all blended out, I'm gonna fill in the rest of her hair with the Y21. Just filling in little circles, but only going over it once, so it's the true, oh, I'm coloring her arm blonde, that's okay. Um, so that it's a true light, okay? And then what I like to do is come in with the Y26.
and I just start to add, I basically am tracing the stamp lines. Like, I'm not an artist, I can't draw, so I utilize the artist, whoever drew the stamp I'm coloring, I utilize what they gave me, right? So I'm just adding some dark with the Y26 on some of the lines of her hair. And this is going to add some definition. And obviously I'm doing this fairly quickly, not thinking about it too, too much. I actually haven't colored this mermaid before, um, but you can kind of see here. And then again, here. So how do you get the highlight hair effect? I don't, this is how I color hair. Okay, I want something easy and something I can manage as a colorer, and this is what I can do. So this is what I do, and this is what we do in my classes. Um, so something else I wanted to show you, let me just put my caps on, is how to add texture um, with dots and how to add shadowing with um, dots. Um, basically what I do and, um, is I'm going to quickly, um, color these bears. So I'm going to use E37 and E33. These are probably my most popular browns that I use. They are on the list, which I will post on my blog. These are, um, some mama elephant bears. So <clears throat> what I do is, um, let's get some color down. So we're gonna shadow in the crevices and the left side, left side and crevices. Okay, and I don't worry if I fill it in all perfectly or anything, or if there's any white showing because I know I'm gonna be working on this for a while. Um, thank you, Joe. Yeah, hair can be stressful. And again, I don't have the highlights that maybe some other Copic colorers have, but I think it looks good. I think it looks fun when you put it all together. So now I'm gonna do little circles. I'm just repeating the steps I've been sharing, but I feel like it probably helps you guys to hear me say it, but I'm doing the little circles over the dark to blend out that line. I'll get these bears colored fairly quickly so I can show you what I really want to show you for this. Oh, thank you so much, Karen. I'm glad that you're finding this helpful. Yes, I will take pictures of all those charts I shared and post them Wednesday on my blog. I have another post that's going up tomorrow, so I will um, give myself till Wednesday because I actually have to write it. Anybody who's taken notes and just wants to write the blog post for me, just send me, just send me the text. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, um, and I'm just gonna add a little bit more dark Remember, I tell myself in my head about half of where I added it before, just to add a little bit more definition. Yeah, these are really cute bears from Mama Elephant. I've had them for a little bit. I actually have made a card with them, so that's a miracle, instead of just collecting them, because I do that too. Yep, now that you guys are part of my Facebook group, um, make it so that you get a notification when I post. And I basically tell you guys anytime I have a new blog post or anytime I have something exciting to share with you guys, I will make sure I always post it in my Facebook group. So those of you that are new members, which there's so many of you, which I'm so excited, um, 
you won't miss anything now that you're part of my Facebook group because I always post my new posts in there. I don't know, Sydney, am I enabling? Am I being a enabler tonight? Hopefully if I am, it's only because you're learning something. Okay, I'm almost done. I'm not gonna spend too much time. They're gonna be a little, a little rough bears, right? Because you guys get the gist. Um, although my favorite color to use to color the little snouts here is E53. So I am gonna quickly do that just so they don't look so unfinished. Now, two things I actually wanna share with you because I just thought of another one is, remember how I said I like to rosy cheeks with R20? Since the lighter color is gonna overpower the darker color, I can still rosy their cheeks even though I colored them in. I'm just taking that R20 and I'm just going over it repeatedly in the same little circle area and it's gonna slowly lighten it up and lay the pink down. So you don't have to put the pink down first and then color over it, around it with the brown. You can just do that after and that adds a cute little um, rosy cheek. But the other thing I wanted to share with you guys to add um, more shadows is you can do little dots. So this is that E37 that I originally used for um, blending. Somebody, oh, Patty's asking, how do you get Copic certified? Copic um, and Imagination International, they offer Copic certification classes all over the country. So you can check out their website for information on that. But you can add little dots anywhere you want. I got I went a little crazy with those dots, but um, you get the picture. But you can add just little dots somewhere that you want some shadowing, and it will kind of give the bears some texture and a little bit of shadow. I got to talking and this is probably a little bit too many dots, um, but everywhere else you can kind of see what I mean, where you just do a few, I'm trying to think. So what I could do to fix where I did too many is use this E33 and I can probably get it to blend out because this is a lighter color. Let's see if I can show you how to fix, maybe. Oh, somebody said they might be not offering the classes anymore, Copic, so I apologize if I'm giving false information. Yeah, thanks, Shari. Now they have chicken pox. I was too busy talking and not really paying attention to what I was doing, but I kind of fixed it. I kind of blended it out. Now I'm going to go back in and add less dots. All right, but see how cute that can look too. Two color blending and with the darker color, just adding some little dots. Yep, bear pox. From now on, whenever you guys add the dots, you're gonna think of that. Now, let me just quickly, I wanna look at my list of questions because as you guys were posting them, um, I was writing them all down. So we talked about shading with grays, with snowmen or snow. I hopefully explained to you, I think that they're worth the money. I've had a lot of people over the years tell me they've bought a different brand of alcohol markers only to turn around and end up getting the Copics because they like them a lot better. Um, people were asking me whether to blend dark to light or light to dark. I highly recommend doing um, dark to light. So lay your dark down first and then you do your light. Um, must have colors. I'm going to post this on, on my um, website. 
and this is my must have for blending. And then remember, I have this list of must have to get started. You don't need them all to get started. Just start with a few. We're into the fall season, so start with oranges and yellows um, and browns. Can you show how to shade under those bears? Yes, I will show that in just a second. Um, how to store them and where store them. Um, it's going to be hard for me to take my camera off the pedestal right now and show you how I store mine, but I will take a picture and add that to my blog post. I basically have a holder in my Roscog cart, and that's how I store mine. Um, but you can store them vertically, horizontally, diagonally, hanging from the ceiling, whatever you want. They can be in a hot area or a light area. I'm sorry, a hot area or a cool area. Um, paper and ink. People were asking me for frugal tips. I explained you really don't want to cut corners on the cardstock you're buying. Make sure you're buying um, the Nina Crest. How to buy colors, whether you should buy them in packs or one by one. Buy them one by one. Do not buy a Copic set. It will not have the blendable colors that paper crafters are looking for. If a marker suddenly leaks, how come? It probably has an air bubble in it. Take both ends off your marker. I explained at the beginning of the video why I use the Square Copic Originals, and I explained the differences between the three, so you guys can watch the beginning if you missed that. I explained the differences in the nibs. Um, you can blend Sketch and Originals together. They're all the same colors. If you buy an R29 in an Original and an R29 in a Sketch, it is the same color, so you totally um, can blend. Tiffany, I got my Copic holder off of Etsy, and I will link to that in my blog post on Wednesday. Um, yeah, Sharon, keep practicing. I think it'll make more sense, and use the blend that I recommend and start dark to light. Um, Diana, if you're asking about the black Copic marker, I actually never use it. I use a W8 um, when I'm coloring something dark so that I don't lose the stamped line. Um, somebody asked if I should use circular motion or strokes. I almost always use circular motion. If you guys do um, have the sketch or a sketch nib on your originals, um, then you can use the like flick motion like this when you're doing more circular or larger area, right? But I almost always do little circles because I tend to be coloring smaller images. Um, letters and numbers, what they mean. We went over that, if I could find my note. Once more, that's this information right here. Skin tones and hair, blonde hair, I talked about that. I know I didn't give information on every skin tone, but that's just because I don't personally switch up my skin tones very often. Um, but that's, again, just how I do my cards. That doesn't mean, you know, there's tons of information out there. I'm sure that you will find skin tones. Thanks, Patty. See you in Minnesota next weekend or a couple days. Um, I shared with you how you can use a gray marker to do shading so that you have to only purchase less markers. Somebody asked about no line coloring. Basically, you're coloring just how I shared with you, but you want to stamp with a very light ink. Um, My Favorite Things has a really good hybrid ink that has a very light brown color. Um... And Simon Says Stamp does as well. And I explained to you guys that I don't really find a light source. I just tell myself left side and crevices. So that's it, you guys. Um, I think I almost covered everything that you guys asked me. If I did miss a question that you guys are asking here in the live, um, I wasn't doing it on purpose. I apologize. It was more you know, me trying to demo and read the comments at the same time. 
Um, but please watch out for that blog post on Wednesday. Uh, I would love to do another Facebook Live with you guys soon, so we'll have to talk about it in the group, what you guys would like to see. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> I don't own any Copics yet, but I will tomorrow. So I guess I enabled Sandy. Um, no worries. At least you commented once. Make sure you've left a couple comments, you guys. I'm going to um, get off of this live, and then I will do the giveaway for the Lawn Fawn Stamp Timber Set, Nutty or Nice. It's the stamps and the dies. I bought one when they came out, so I'm going to do that as my giveaway. Um, thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate you all being here. I can't believe it. There's still over 100 people, and I have a feeling I've been talking a really long time. Yep, two hours. I'm so sorry, but there was a lot I wanted to share with you. Awesome, awesome. People looking forward to my art retreat in November. Ah, uh, bummer, Penny. I'm so bummed I won't see you. Hopefully next time. And that's it, you guys. I am going to sign off. Um, and I will talk to you guys later. See you in the group. Ask questions. And I'm always here to help. Have a good night, you guys.